In Disney movies, it's all about good versus evil. Where good prevails and evil gets fed to a bunch of hyenas or dramatically dropped off a cliff. Recently, it's been very popular to tell stories from the bad guy perspective. The Broadway musical and novel Wicked tells us the Wicked Witch or Elphaba's story. Similarly with Maleficent, we get another side to the Sleeping Beauty story we all know and love. Whether they are good or evil largely depends on the actions they choose to make. Sometimes if you change the perspective, you might see a whole new world. And speaking of whole new worlds, let's take a look at one of Disney's most hated and well-dressed villains, Jafar from Aladdin. He hypnotizes people, attempted to kill Aladdin, try to gain phenomenal cosmic powers, 100% total bad guy. Or is he? Is it possible that Jafar is just the misunderstood good guy of Aladdin? You heard me right, Jafar is the true hero of Disney's Aladdin. But how is that even possible? Look at him. His facial hair alone is cause for alarm. You know, this may not be the first time you've heard of Jafar potentially being the good guy. In 2013, Star Kid Productions released a musical parody called Twisted, the untold story of a royal vizier. The idea is that we look at Jafar as the royal vizier, trying to help save the troublesome kingdom over the film's point of view as him as a villain. So according to this theory found all across the internet, Jafar is just misunderstood. Despite his obvious portrayal as an immoral psychopath, Jafar has a lot going for him. He's well educated, financially stable, and has got a pretty solid job. His peers respect him, he can do magic tricks, and he's an animal lover. Jafar, get a grip! Also, he genuinely wants to see his beloved city of Agrabah flourish, yet he's forced to look on as the banking crisis of 1000 BCE destroys it. Put yourself in Jafar's shoes. He has to watch his boss, the ruler of a crumbling country, play with toys, blabber on about his silly hat, and spoil his daughter with expensive and probably illegally imported pets. While children beg for food and citizens are forced to put up with the corrupt royal guards, Jasmine herself is pretty unaware of what's happening outside the palace walls. So it's reason to believe that the Sultan is probably negligent towards his kingdom. Royal Vizier Jafar is frustrated. If the Sultan isn't going to do his job, at least Jasmine could marry someone who might improve Agrabah. Unfortunately, Jasmine has sent her pet tiger after any potential suitor because she wants to marry for love, leaving the kingdom without a proper ruler. With Agrabah in such bad shape and the Sultan not really doing anything to help, what's a dedicated public servant to do? Exactly what Jafar does. He tries to get a promotion with the best tools in his toolbox. In this case, his toolbox includes a lovable genie, so he can be become the new Sultan of Agrabah and save his home. Jafar never actually says what he plans to do with this power besides saving it from the Sultan's poor leadership skills. He never says I want to kill, crush, or oppress anyone. So now, enter the true villain of Aladdin. Aladdin. He's a slacker and a thief who justifies robbing other poor people. And let's face it, Aladdin himself admits to being a con man. So how can we believe anything he says? Either way, Jafar still comes out looking better. If Aladdin has no choice but to steal to survive, then Agrabah is in as worse shape as Jafar thought it was. And he's totally right to want to save his home from an inept leader who, no question about it, sucks at his job. Plus, Jafar wants to find the magical lamp and wish granting genie so he can save his home from corruption and ineptitude. Aladdin wants to use it to trick a beautiful and rich girl into falling in love with him. Priorities, people. So is it possible that Jafar is actually the good guy here? This is all certainly a very persuasive argument. Yet despite his good intentions, Jafar is still guilty of murder. He let Gazim the thief die in the cave at the beginning of the movie. Fraud. He betrayed Aladdin after hiring him to do that job. Attempted murder. He tried to kill Aladdin later. Practicing hypnosis without a license. You can't be all willy-nilly with that stuff, trust me. Attempted murder again. He really wanted to kill Aladdin. And finally, treason and coercion. He tried to steal the throne and force Jasmine and the Sultan to do his bidding.
Giddy. Of course, if this theory is correct, we have to keep in mind that Jafar was doing all of this to save his beloved Agrabah from certain destruction. So technically, all of that murder and treason came from a good place? And you have to admit it, upon further inspection, Aladdin seems like a total jerk. So what's my verdict on the theory? I gotta say, while I am a lot more sympathetic to Jafar now, he still killed a guy, tried to kill Aladdin more than once, and wasn't exactly honest in his intentions with Jasmine either. And just because Aladdin kinda seems like a jerk doesn't make Jafar a hero. So on the plausibility meter, I have to give the Jafar conspiracy two flying carpets out of five. In the comments, let me know what you thought of this conspiracy and if you agree or disagree with how I rated it. Subscribe to Channel Frederator and I'll see you guys next week. When it comes to old school Nicktoons, Hey Arnold easily ranks among the best ever. The cast was diverse and the stories were totally relatable. And who doesn't love characters with football shaped heads? Hey Arnold was created by Craig Bartlett and aired for five seasons. During that time we followed Arnold, a fourth grader who lived with his grandparents in the city of Hillwood. He took on adventures to help solve classmates problems or come up with solutions to his own predicaments. Helga Pataki was another standout character in the show. She was often mean to Arnold, but secretly had a crush on him. Hers is a tragic coming of age tale about unrequited love, the pressures of growing up, and unibrows. I mean, haven't we all been Helga at one point or another? In fact, some argue that Helga is actually the heart of the show. Have we been fooled by the show name all along? Is Helga Pataki really the protagonist of Hey Arnold? 